Oh shit. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is me, I am Tung. And today I just want to talk about my favorite lenses at the moment. These are lenses that I've already reviewed. If you're interested in seeing those reviews, I'll leave the link in the description box and the comment sections for you guys. And of course, they are the 35mm f1.4, get it? And the 90mm f2. So let's get started. Did, did you have to interrupt me? <laughs> Where's my Apple Pen? You mean my Apple Pen? Can I start now? Yeah. Okay, cool. So I've owned the 35mm f1.4 in the past and I absolutely loved my time with it, but for some reason my dumbass decided to sell it a few years ago. It's not until the pandemic happened that I picked up uh, the 35mm f1.4 again so I can make that lens review for you guys. There is something about this lens that absolutely is magic. It's magical. The characteristics and the rendering reminds me of what I see in film photos. Um, it invokes like a mood, a feeling, it invokes a vibe. I really dig it. So looking back at all my images shot with this lens, it made me realize that I've shot with this thing a lot. I really like the 50 millimeter full frame equivalent, the nifty 50, and I am comfortable with this focal length. I think it has enough compression to isolate the subject. And if I need to add more context to tell a story, I can always move back a smidge to get the background involved and i forgot to mention it in the lens review but this lens can get in real close so you can get some intimate feeling portraits when the subject is close so all these things mixed together makes for what i feel is a great lens uh, but yeah this lens renders images not in a sterile clinical way and that's one of the reasons why i've been so in love with it there is a lot of soul in this lens and although this lens has some cons um, shooting with this lens over the past three four months now reminded me why I love this lens so much and if anything I do have a deeper appreciation for this lens and you know what I'm just going to show you some of my favorite shots taken with the 35mm f1.4 lens so here we go cue montage <music> Let me know which shots you liked from uh, the 35mm f1.4. And lastly, I want to talk about the 90mm f2. This thing right here. This baby, this girthy fellow. Look, look at that. I think the 90 and the 35mm complement each other so much. If you need something a bit wide, you have the 35. And if you want something really tight, you can use the 90mm. And I think this lens gives both these lenses actually give gives a unique rendering. The 90mm f2 is sharp at f2, so you don't need to stop it down at all. It's plenty of sharp, and what I like about this lens is the depth, the sharpness that you get, and some of the shots I've gotten have wowed me so much, and I deem this lens the cinematic lens, and every time I've shot with this lens, it just seems to look like stills from a movie. And I really do like that look. It's a look that I try to emulate a lot when it comes to 
my portrait photography. If you guys look at my Instagram, you notice that I've been posting pictures uh, stacked, like the three pictures in one in one post. And that is because I want to tell more of a story and I feel you can do that in three frames instead of one. And this lens does that quite well. I'm going to show you some of my favorite shots with the 90 millimeter F2 and let me know what are some of your favorite shots with this lens. Q montage. Unlike the 35 millimeter, I've never owned this lens previously and I and never got a chance to get rid of it. However, I did shoot with this thing for one day a few years ago and I didn't think anything of it. I didn't see what the big deal was. I actually thought this focal length was too tight for my taste at the time, but things change and preference change and that's why I really like this lens now. And it's so funny because I made a video almost a year ago about my top five portrait lenses and you can watch that here somewhere. But yeah, these two lenses weren't even in my top five at the time and now they're two of my favorite portrait lenses at the moment and you know there are some things that I don't like about the 35 millimeter f1.4 and one of that thing is that grainy texture you get when you shoot at a high ISO it bothers me so much and that's why I didn't put it in my top five last year but when I started shooting with it again I fell in love with this lens and I created some of my best work with this lens recently so so it definitely changed my tune about this lens. I am also excited to see what the 35mm f1.4 brings to the table but if it was up to me I would much rather have like a 35mm f1.4 mark II in the future. I just want a faster focusing 35mm with the same lens formula that the Fuji engineers have put in this lens right here. Like if, if we can get an update of this lens, just make it faster focusing and weather sealing with the same optical formula, give it the same characteristics. That would be great. <laughs> that would be absolutely great. With the 90 millimeter right here, you got this right here too. I just love it. It's quick to focus. It takes amazing photos. The subject isolation on a 90 millimeter f2 is insanely good. And both of these lenses are going to stay in my kit for a very long time. There you have it. That is it for me, guys. Hope you guys enjoy this little video. It's really bad in Ontario, Toronto right now. There's like a lot of rain. The seasons has changed. It's fall now, so it's kind of becoming depressing and I don't have the motivation to freaking make YouTube videos. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this little video. What are your favorite lenses for portraits? Let me know in the comments below. I really like these two lenses and I'm going to deem them the untouchables. Uh, no matter what happens, I don't think I will ever sell these lenses ever again. Thanks so much for uh, watching guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, once again, my name is Tung and I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Okay, bye.